Can you write this down, Jerry? Thank you. Confusion. Got that? Yep. Hang in there now. One more day to go, Andrew. Alright. Continue? Yes. Yeah. Right, so, uh, this is the concept of fission. What you have is, uh, for example, a heavy atom, a heavy isotope like uranium. What is basically uranium? Huh? I haven't... Why do you have a question? I've only said one sentence so far. What's your question? It could be like the other... another element. Listen to me. Listen <laughs> to me. For example, if you have something heavy like uranium-235, this is an example of what fission is. So what you do is you take something like a neutron and you fire the neutron at the uranium. And this causes the uranium to break into two. So it becomes krypton and uh, I think this is barium. It splits into two and three neutrons break off. But if you calculate the mass of the krypton, the neutron, the neutron, the neutron, and the barium, that mass will be less than mm -hmm. this mass yeah. plus this mass. Yeah. So by Einstein's formula last day, there will be energy produced from the nuclear reaction. Mm -hmm. And this energy will equal mc squared, where m is the apparent loss mass. So, <coughs> This is the uh, example uh, of fission. Basically, it means to break an atom, a heavy atom apart, to release energy. And it's easier to break big isotopes than small isotopes. Because when it's a big isotope, it, it, it's already... We saw in our graph the last time that at the end of the graph, you start to move down. And at the end of the graph is uranium. So the binding energy per nucleon is reducing towards the end of the periodic table. So these heavy, heavy atoms, uranium, they're easier to split and you can release this energy. So what I need you to do before we write down the definition, this picture actually, if you can copy this picture, it's useful. It's helpful to remember what it is. I would like you to roughly draw this, Sean. Oh, I need coffee and porridge. Go and have it. No, I can't. With my coffee. You want a cappuccino? Mm -hmm. Go buy us two cappuccinos. You should do this for me. It's Easter. You have to. You have to celebrate my culture. Yeah. Yes. So, so what? So what? So why is it not so my culture? What are you talking about? I love Chinese New Year. Yes. Yeah. So, where is my chance? Your gift. I am your gift. <laughs> okay. He's a gift. Uh, <laughs> Sean, that's not a good gift. <laughs> not good. That's bad. Oh yes, sure. Three neutrons. Oh, the projector is. Uh, Jerry, maybe you could move the projector a little to the left. Could you move that? Or, or well, I don't know. Or Sean, whoever's taller. Are you the same height? Are you taller than Jerry? No. And you? Come on. Oh, let, let it happen. Oh, I love it. Oh, wow. And then you go there. <laughs> 
Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. 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 No, oh. let me show you. Okay. No, no, don't give it Calculation must be very difficult to work out what it will split into because it's like saying I fire something at the window and I want to know how the window will break, you know, which way it'll part. So I, I wouldn't wouldn't imagine it's an easy proof a calculation. Uh, okay, you got this. Yeah. So the next one uh, or the next idea is something called a chain reaction. So, you notice when you have um, fission, you get two smaller atoms, energy, and then usually something like free neutrons. So, you realize, oh, if I, um, if I have my atoms close together, then when I break one of them, and they split, the, par yeah, yeah, the parts that break off could hit more atoms. And they could break again and hit more atoms. Repeat. So repeat in process. So this first one can break two, and then each of these can break two more. So this is what's called a chain reaction, where one fission process causes two more, and they cause two more. 
So the first one is called the first generation, then the next process is called the second and third generation and so on. So again, can you draw this diagram? This is an example of what's called a chain reaction. When there's no uranium left. Huh? Yeah. H? No, no, yeah, yeah, K or and B A. When they all turn into K or and B A, krypton and barium. So what does it change into K and B A? Yeah, it's not on the picture. So, for example, when this one splits, it becomes K or K, 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 K krypton and barium, and it releases neutrons. So you would like some of these neutrons that are released to hit more uranium to make more krypton barium energy and more <coughs> neutrons. Then are krypton and barium stable? I think they are pretty stable, yeah. Um I, I, I'm pretty sure they're stable. Okay. Because uh, KJ, I feel like if they weren't so stable, they would have split. They would then continue to split until they become something stable in the, in the chain reaction. You got this? Yeah. Continue. So. A chain reaction is a reaction in which a heavy isotope, such as uranium or plutonium, splits and the neutrons released by the fission of the atom strike and split other heavy atoms, which as a result hit other ones one after another. Uh, chain reactions are the main way of getting nuclear energy. Now that's enough. Break, Jerry. Don't be so annoyed at me. Come on, teacher. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Got that? No, not yet. Got that? No. Got that? Okay, hold on, I just want to open this. Come on, John! I'll give you... What word are you on? Uh, last sentence. Last sentence? This is only one sentence. <laughs> 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 <coughs> yeah.
Yeah, this is one sentence. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go on to the next box. So, uh, you realize that if your uranium atoms are too far apart, then when the neutron is released, it'll be difficult to hit the atoms if they're far apart. You understand? So, we have this idea that's called a critical mass. If you don't have enough uranium, then you won't get this chain reaction. So a critical mass is how much mass you need so that you can have a chain reaction. If you have less than this, you get no chain reaction. And if you have more than or equal to this, then you can get a chain reaction. Uh, so I don't think you have to write this down because this is just explaining the idea. But you definitely need to write down what critical mass is. And let me just uh, fix something here. So just the first sentence here, please. We use this word, uh, this term, <coughs> critical mass in English. Does anybody know the meaning in, in English of critical mass? It's when we talk about a business. You understand that if the business is too small, it might not be successful. But when the business becomes a certain size, it becomes big enough that people can know about it and they can go there and, you know, it can be successful. So in English, this critical mass means like a point that you need. And then when you're past it, then lots of things can start happening by itself. So, you know, something like Google. At one point, Google was so small, not many people know about it. But now Google is so big, they don't need to do anything. Everybody knows to go there when they need to search. So they've passed the critical mass. Okay, continue. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Yes, I think this would be good. So, this is, well, kind of. This is how you can use nuclear energy to make a uh, to make a power, uh, a power plant. So, how does this work? Let me explain it. You have these things here, can you see? Uranium fuel elements. Now, this uranium is decaying. It's releasing lots of energy. So, in fact, it's very, very hot. And it's so hot, it makes this sodium turn into a liquid. And this sodium moves through a pipe and goes into some cold water. Now, what happens to this cold water when it's near a hot pipe? It boils and it'll turn into steam. This steam will turn um, a magnet. And by using Faraday's induction, yeah, using the, the, the uh, left-hand rule, it can make a current by turning the magnet, you know, the, the AC generator. And then the water cools down and turns back into a liquid. And uh, the, the way you cool the water down is you have something here where cold water comes in and then uh, the warm water comes out because this cools, this is the cooling chamber. <coughs> it releases a lot of energy. No, 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 because, this is the smart part, this warm water that comes out is clean because it's not touching anything. Can you see? It's, it's, uh, it's separate. This clean water is then given to people's homes for free. So they have hot water in their homes. Yeah. So, homes near nuclear power plants... Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, <laughs> well, you know... 
this is fair because when you n live near a nuclear power plant, you have a very small risk of a disaster. Yeah. But I mean, this is life. Every every day of your life, there's a small risk of a disaster. You know, a plane could fall out of the sky and <laughs> land on you. So you might not want to be near an airport. Okay. You can cross the road and get a bus. You can get hit by a bus. So maybe you don't want to need to be near a bus stop. Okay. So the people that live near the power plants. They are compensated because they get free hot water. This is like their, their payment for accepting the small risk. Then they have free hot water. Is it small risk? It is a small risk. The problem with nuclear power plants is <coughs> when they fail, they fail in a big way. It's not like a power plant of coal or oil. When they fail, then it's a fire but you can control the fire. The nuclear is different. So, what we need to talk about is what goes wrong. Okay? These nuclear rods get really, really hot. Yeah. And there's lots of energy and neutrons being released. So the way to reduce this is we have this thing called a, a, a control rod. And the control rod is usually made of something like carbon. So what happens is you have this nuclear rod lots of energy coming out of it uh, and if you have too much energy you put these control rods uh, they, they put this cover on the uranium and this reduces the energy because the carbon absorbs some of the neutrons I, I think it's carbon but I can check for you yeah, I think it's carbon yeah so uh, what happens like in Japan or other places when you have disaster most of the time the problem is with the control rods this is where the problem happens because what happens is the control rods get stuck they get jammed and they're unable to drop on the uranium so then what happens to the uranium it gets hotter and it gets hotter and it gets hotter and this is a problem because it'll just keep getting hot until it explodes there's no capacity to the control rod like how much they can absorb no. um, I'm sure there must be some limit at some point but what's happening here uh, Andrew is when the control rod is down it's absorbing energy but it's stopping the energy traveling to the neighboring control rods so it's, it's limiting the chain reaction uh, so it's like it acts as a barrier to the chain reaction as well. Now, I believe most of the time there's a nuclear disaster, it's because the control rods fail. Uh, in Japan, it was because of an earthquake. Uh, the last nuclear disaster, does anyone know the one before Japan? The last big one? Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Russia? Yeah, yeah. One in 1973? No, no, 80. That's right. You, you call it. Ukraine, yeah, yeah. The same thing happened there. Uh, what happened was the control rods failed to drop. But um, there was another disaster in America, I think in Long Island. Again, the same problem, the control rods failed to drop. In Long Island, the problem was caused by a faulty uh, control panel. The control panel... Uh, did not send a signal to drop the, the control rod. So, in, in the example of Long Island, uh, what happened was uh, the machine said press to, to drop, uh, and then something was stuck. It didn't drop. But the machine thought it did drop. So people didn't understand why the reactor was getting hotter and hotter because their machine said the control rod was down, but it wasn't actually down. And if they knew the problem, maybe they could have freed it, but they were just they just didn't know what the problem was. And the problem was bad engineering design because the machine that sends the signal to drop the control rod, it sends the signal back that the control rod is dropped even if it's not dropped. So the signal is sent to drop it, but there's nothing to check that it has dropped. It's like if I press a button to close the door, and the computer says the door is closed because I pressed the button, 
but there's actually something stopping the door closing. You know? So bad engineering was the Long Island one. Uh, in Chernobyl, uh, the connection here to the top where you have the lever, uh, this melted, and when it melted, it then jammed. There was a problem there. And in Japan, it was because of the earthquake that damaged it, because they weren't expecting an earthquake so big. So the machine, the reactor wasn't designed for such an earthquake. Can what stop it? Oh yeah, so what do you do if this happens? How do you stop it? So what usually happens like in Japan and Chernobyl, you usually near, need to be near like a river or an ocean. When these rods get so hot, there's an emergency, emergency uh, hole here that's connected to the ocean. So what they do is they open this and let all the ocean water in. And their job is to try and cool this down. How can they let lots and lots of ocean water in. So the ocean water fills the chamber and then comes out. Do you understand? So they really put lots of cold water in there to try and cool it down quickly. Because if they don't cool it down then you have a big problem then. Well it worked in Japan and it worked in Chernobyl. Huh? It will be, but because the size of the ocean is, is, it's okay. I mean, the alternative is you let the reactor explode. This is not an alternative, you know. But of course, um, <coughs> the good thing is, because this is mostly alpha radiation, it means that it's not as bad as if it was like beta, because the distance is quite short. So in the, in the water, the people that go into the reactor, you might think that's a very dangerous job going into the reactor. <laughs> yeah, like the scuba divers. Because when this is cooled down, somebody has to swim inside and push these down. That's somebody's job. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that big? How big? Ah, no, this would be pretty big. This would be pretty big. But it's actually not too bad because of the water, it means the alpha radiation will be blocked by one meter. So if you stay one meter away from this, it should be okay. Well, it depends on the reason. So like, for example, in Chernobyl, if the top melted, you would need to maybe burn this away, like with a blowtorch of some kind, uh, and then you can push it down. If once you free it, like maybe you could cut the top off and then push it down or something like this. It depends on the reason. <coughs> Well, I mean, I suppose nowadays, like what we what wasn't true in Chernobyl is that there wasn't any robots. So, like nowadays, I suppose you could have some kind of remote robot, some sort of underwater robot that perhaps get in here. But you couldn't do that in 1982. You know, but at least now you could probably do that. So you're right. <coughs> nuclear power plants are dangerous, but. How often is there a disaster? Maybe once per 10 years? Once per 10 years? Well, think about it. There's Japan. Yeah, and then there was... Okay, maybe more. Maybe once per 20 years. Yeah. You have Japan, you have Long Island, and you have Chernobyl. There's the big tree. Mm. Yeah. Now, Japan, I know it was very <coughs> bad, but, you know, it didn't explode. Now the neighbouring town is still radioactive and needs to be cleaned up, the same in Chernobyl. But it didn't explode, you know. Yeah, yeah, in Chernobyl the ground is radioactive from the smoke that came out. Uh, in Japan the neighbouring town is still radioactive, it needs to, nobody's allowed in, it needs to be cleaned up. Long Island was quite remote, so it didn't cause as much damage. Not too clean the yeah. How to clean it up? Well, in Chernobyl it's impossible now because so much time has passed before anyone cleaned it up that it sunk into the ground. So you can't clean it up. So it means now you'd either have to wait thousands of years for it to decay or somebody will have to dig the ground up and remove the, the soil. Mm -hmm. Change the soil. Change the soil, yeah. But that's going to be too uh, difficult. Huge work. Huge work. Huge work. Uh, in Japan, um, you know, because it's a modern economy, very wealthy, 
it'd be easier and quicker for them to replace the radioactive material that's been contaminated. But in Chernobyl, it's a big problem because the government didn't do anything and the problem got worse. The other problem in Chernobyl is that it's very cold. This actually uh, makes the, the, the radioactive decay, it actually makes it longer. Um, in Japan, it's not as cold, so, you know, these things uh, make a difference. But basically, to clean it up means you just have to take the bad stuff away. So you have to lift the ground up and dump it somewhere and put new earth down. So cleaning up is expensive, very expensive. It's yeah. It's like it's cold. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think it's quite this, I don't think it's quite the same. The explosion will just be a radioactive explosion. So it, it, I, I think it would just it'd be a, a bit like in Chernobyl when it exploded, the smoke that came out from it was radioactive. So when this smoke falls on the town, it you know it's like a blanket of uh, radiation that falls on the town. Yeah. I will do that one later too. Okay. Yeah. So in the exam, they might not expect you to draw this, but they could, for example, ask you uh, like they might ask you the name of this part, the fuel element, or what they've asked recently is uh, <coughs> what's the name of this part, the control rod. So I do want you to draw this because it's the names that you need for the exam. What? Yeah, you need to draw this. It's the names that you need to know. Which All these names. See, oh. Okay. Ah, no, try to draw it. Yes, question. Um, how does it convert to magnet? Ah, uh, it's something that it pushes as it moves through the pipe that turns a wheel. Okay. Uh, do you, yeah, do you know the way like you see a water wheel? The water comes down and it hits this wheel and it turns the wheel. Oh, okay. Kind of, Sunshine. yeah, kind of similar except the steam pushes, pushes something that would turn. Now I know this seems scary, but to be honest, uh, if we're talking about energy in the future, um, really it needs to be a mix of many things. You need to use coal, you'll need to use oil, you'll need to use nuclear. <coughs> some countries don't have nuclear, yeah. and some countries have too much nuclear. Does anybody know? No, I wouldn't say America now. America uses a lot of oil. Yeah. So, does anybody know which country has the most nuclear power plants? No. Nope. Germany. No. Nope. No. Nope. 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 France. France, correct, yeah. yeah. France uses a lot. Yep, yeah, I think it's the most. And that's the technology of that. So in France, the percent of electricity that's made by nuclear power plants is 72%. Mm -hmm. 72% of the energy made in France is from nuclear power plants. Um, to what do you think? Um, what do you think? What do you think it is in the United States? Yeah, you're not far off, 19.7. And the UK? 
20.4. Russia, 17%. 17, 17, 17 17. Yeah. Japan, let's see, Japan. Japan, go on, have a guess, what do you think Japan is? 40 something? 15. 15? 25? 40, 18. 40, 18? You're all too high. Get ready for this. 10. 2.2. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Korea, wow. Korea, 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 uh, Korea, Korea, Republic of uh, Turkey, Turkey. <coughs> China. China. Have a guess. What do you think? Seventeen. Five. Ah, uh, yeah, three point six. Ah, uh, don't be disappointed. Ireland is zero. Wow. <laughs> 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 well, that's even better, right? Different no. countries have different needs. France, France don't need seventy percent. That's too much because France have other things they could do. They have solar or wind. Yeah. yeah. Silver for efficiency. <coughs> no. Nuclear power plants are not. Uh, they're very, very, very expensive. They're very expensive, and not only are they very expensive, the money that you save is really zero. So, like, if you're a country and you have a choice between coal, oil, gas, nuclear, the only reason you would choose nuclear. It's political. Political. Political, yeah. That you don't want your country dependent on Middle Eastern countries or other countries for a supply of oil. Uh, and huh? Clear. Yeah, isn't no, clear. no, because it's there's the nuclear waste. The not uh, the less. Yeah, much better than coal. But the problem with this is the fuel rods. When you're finished with the fuel rods, yeah. what do you do with them? Because they're still radioactive. Yeah, sending to universe. Put the box into the well, TV box. TV box. In, in France, they put it into concrete mm -hmm. and they bury it at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And then they thought that this will last for 500 years. However, when they visit 10 years later, they can see that the concrete has started to crack. Yeah. So it means that at the bottom of the ocean near France, the waste is coming out from the ocean floor. So what they do in the UK is they have uh, plants that try to clean the they used uranium. But this also produces waste that is released into the ocean. And it's quite annoying because they put the nuclear waste plant on the west coast uh, so that the water travels across to Ireland. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's disgraceful because we don't have any nuclear power plants, but <laughs> <laughs> our coastline has more radiation than the coastline of the UK, who do have nuclear power, because they pump their waste into the ocean, pointing towards us. This is one of the many, many reasons that feelings are uh, the way that they are. It's same as Jeff. They are as Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, it's worse here, it's worse. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll show you here. Uh, can I just close this picture and show you something here? Yeah. No. Not yet. Yeah, so they put it in the Irish Sea. Yeah. Look, come in, you can eat fish on the ocean. Uh-huh. We can because... Uh, the 
To be honest, Jerry, the, the problem really with ocean fish is not nuclear. The real problem with ocean fish is how much plastic there is in the ocean. A lot of plastic is ending up inside of fish. You know, they eat plastic and then they have plastic inside them, and then you eat the fish and now you have plastic. The, the problem is the plastic. <coughs> Too much plastic in the ocean. It's just a big, big problem. How can we clean it? You can't, like, the plastic doesn't decay, and you can't, you can't take the plastic out of the fish because it's like it's mixed inside with their tissue, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they eat the food and their body absorbs it, so it means the plastic is kind of inside their tissue, it's mixed around. It's a big problem. It's a big problem because plastic doesn't decay, it doesn't decay. But isn't plastic also one of like uh, materials and parts of our plastic? Yeah. No. It's man made. It's not natural. It's cheap. And it's cheap. And it's it's very bad for the environment. Like very it's cheap and it's useful, but it's very bad for the environment. You know, like paper, metal, glass, this is much better because it's easy to recycle. You know, paper will decay. If I have a piece of paper and I throw it out on the street, I shouldn't, of course, but if I to throw it out on the street, eventually, after the rain and the wind and everything, it will decay. You know, but if I have a bit of plastic, you know, from a uh, packet of sweets or something and I throw that out on the street it will never decay, it will stay there forever mm-hmm. until, until somebody <coughs> picks it up you know? uh, this, I'll show you here um, if I switch here here's um, this is the plant in the UK that cleans up the waste uh, it's called Salafields oh. yeah here we go this is it here this cleans up the uranium that comes out of the power plants, which you can see on the map here, it's on the coast here, uh-huh. uh, and the, the, it, it travels quite nicely over to here, on the east coast, it's not, it's not, very, it's not very pleasant, um, so, just To give you an idea of how expensive cleaning up it is, at uh, year 2009 2010, uh, <coughs> estimated cost, what's this, 41 billion? It costs 2 billion a year to run this plant. 2 billion a year. And this plant doesn't make any energy, it doesn't have any money coming in. It's only cleaning up the energy. It's not like a power plant that has money coming in because it's making power. This is only a cost. Two billion a year. So with the nuclear, when you balance the everything, I don't think it's as good as uh, coal or oil. You know? Like I said, the reason for nuclear is political. You want your country to look strong, you have nuclear power. You don't want to depend on Saudi Arabia, like in France, you have nuclear power. Okay. It's all it's political, not engineering. Yeah. Um, if we use uh, clear energy like solar panel, yeah. Uh, if we have transformer, could we? Um yeah, the problem, the problem with the clean energy, the solar, is how to store it. So if you make more energy than you need, how do you store that? Because some days you won't have enough energy and you'll need to use that. So with oil, you don't have to do this because it's already in a stored form, liquid oil. Same with gas, same with nuclear. The energy is in the fuel rod. But with <coughs> solar, where do you store the energy when you make it? Where do you put it? Uh, no, a capacitor won't store enough for long enough. Exactly, that's my point. They don't. So, if you make too much, you can't use it. And then, when you don't have enough, 
you have to use oil and gas. So, this is the biggest problem. The biggest problem with clean energy is when you make it, how do you store it? This is the biggest, biggest problem. You can't really use batteries because they are not good for the environment, the lithium batteries. And in fact, recently I saw China has bought a lot of lithium mines. So I think China controls two-thirds of the world's lithium supplies. If you have a lithium battery, you know lithium? Yeah, 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 yeah. The lithium probably came from a mine that China owns. Because China owns most of the world's lithium. Yeah. Did you know this? No. No, okay. So, if you don't want to depend on Saudi Arabia, then you will have to depend on China if you use clean energy, because you'll have to use the lithium. If you don't want to depend on China, then you have to depend on somebody else. You know? Yeah, I know China has a lot of Huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 Would there be new possibilities you can get new energy, new kind of energy? Yeah, well, just to finish, we're not, we're not finished this, we'll continue this after the break. Mm -hmm. But just to end on a positive note, there is another type of energy which is 100% clean Com and 100% Com safe. Com Com safe. Com nuclear yes. Uh, IG, are you from? Yes. Yeah. It's 100% clean. What? It's 100% safe, yeah. and we'll do it after the break. It's called nuclear fusion. Oh, it's extremely difficult. <laughs> extremely. Come in, I'm finished. We're just talking about nuclear reactors. Okay. I yeah. saw this as an opportunity to bring up solid fields. Yeah. Okay, are there questions for yoga? Yeah, just it's a physics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was explaining how unhappy I am with, you know, Sellafield's existence and all yeah. that. You know. yeah. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. Um, it's a chart of which country, uh, how much of their energy is produced by nuclear. So I knew France was the highest, but I didn't know it was 72%. Yeah, but what was surprising for a lot of students is down in Japan, 2.2. <laughs> Despite having their high profile disaster, Indeed. all for 2.2 percent. I know. Not much of a gain, really. No, and I didn't realise how much and how much how similar the UK and the US were. Right, yeah. Okay. And is the US 